Welcome to the Leon Sea History Channel, where we walk the seashore of the past. At the very eastern end of the High Street is Lee Beach, that has been in use as a pleasure beach since 1897. Today, this tiny sliver of sand becomes extremely busy in the summer, and as these old photos show, this has been the case since the end of the 19th century. Holiday makers and locals enjoy spending time here, particularly during the annual Lee Regatta that originally ran between 1910 and 1939. Here we see locals playing football in the mud on the 22nd of August 1925. The regatta is still going strong in 1952, as these photos show. The regatta was abandoned at some point, but was revived in 1973 as a fundraising event and continued until 2019. It is hoped the regatta will return in 2024. However, as this photo featured in John F. Bundock's Lee A Pictorial History shows, we have some record of what the area looked like earlier in the Victorian era. This photo was taken from Bell Wharf in the 1890s. There was no artificially made beach, and the cinder path that runs from the old town east to Chalkwell and beyond was not yet in place. Behind the white fence on the left of the picture was a coal and goods yard built by the railway company. The black building at the end of the white fence was Thomas Bundock's boat building shed. I do not think that this Bundock, the boat builder, was an ancestor of Canon John F. Bundock. Thomas Bundock began boat building about 1813 and the trade was continued by his son and grandson until at least 1943. Just to the right of the boat building yard was the Coast Guard station. Here, the Coast Guard station is seen looking west towards Bell Wharf in about 1900. In 1851, there were six Coast Guards who wore uniforms similar to the seamen in the Royal Navy, and one Thomas Garland was their chief officer. Apart from two local men early on, all the customs officers and Coast Guards had to abide by some simple rules. They were not allowed to be members of a local family and they were not allowed to marry into the close-knit families of Old Lee. This was in order to prevent collusion. Along with the customs officers at the old custom house, much of the Coast Guard's time was spent combating the numerous smuggling operations that continued in Old Lee well into the 20th century. The customs officers stopped using the old custom house about 1856 when the building was bought by the London Tilbury and South End Railway Company. They continued their fight against the smugglers into the 1900s, working out of the Coast Guard station while lodging at Coast Guard cottages situated in the gardens of Lee Hill, seen here in this 1978 photo taken by Paddy Ballard. The Coast Guard building itself was eventually demolished to make way for expanded railway sidings that were constructed when the second Lee railway station was built in 1910, the building now occupied by the Lee Sailing Club. Seen here from the old iron footbridge is the up platform of the second railway station with the goods yard and beach behind them. This photograph was taken sometime between 1910 and 1933. Around the time this photograph was taken, a classic of Victorian sailing called Swin, Swale and Swatchway was published by the author Henry Lewis Jones. Jones had been introduced to Lee in the 1880s by a friend who had known the place for years and had the happy knack of getting on well with all the waterside folk, and delighted to know as many of the fishermen and the inhabitants of the village as possible. Jones gives us a vivid description of the town as it was 140 years ago. Lee stands on the sunny slope of a hill. The view of Lee from the water is very picturesque. A foreground of fishing bawlies, a line of straggling cottages along Lee Creek, backed by others rising in tears irregularly, one above the other, with their bright red tiled roofs and green trees and gardens, and the church at the top of the hill, and near it a grove of elms where the rooks build and clamour all through the spring and early summer. Joan's companion had befriended a 70-year-old fisherman who was considered to be the best boat sailor in Lee at that time, and had made the man the shipkeeper of his boat that was called the Teal. The fisherman's name was Henry Cotgrove, the Cotgroves being one of the long-established Lee families. 
To avoid confusion among the many generations of these various large families, often sharing the same Christian names, nicknames were almost universally employed in the old town. There will be a separate video about this colourful practice. This particular Henry Cotgrove was always referred to as Benson. Benson Cotgrove had been the shipkeeper of the Teal for about five years by the time Jones first joined the tiny crew of three men and a dog in the late 1880s. The shore would have looked very similar to this. Jones extolled the virtues of the town. Lee is not at all a bad place for headquarters, provided that one's boat does not draw more than about three feet of water. The station is close to the water's edge, which simplifies the labour of carrying one's stores to and from the boat. There are some fair grocer's shops in Lee, and a convenient inn, the ship, in which one can change one's togs. The Teal was moored a little way east of the Coast Guard Watch House, just beyond where today's beach ends. The ship had been laid up by Benson, who stored its bedding, kit bags, oilskins and sea boots in his shed, situated nearby. The fact that the boat was moored so close to the Coast Guard station meant she was very safe from those abominable light-fingered longshoremen who are not unknown at some other towns on the Thames and Medway. Jones finished by writing Lee is a far better place than Southend to keep a boat because there are less loafers and less traffic and better Coast Guard supervision. In April 1897, Lee Urban District Council was formed and inspired by the success of nearby Southend, the council embarked on a scheme to make Lee an attractive seaside resort for day trippers and holiday makers from London. Five groins were constructed on the foreshore, enabling the creation of a sandy beach, and the footbridge over the railway, seen in this postcard, enabled pedestrians to reach the beach from Lee Hill, seen here from the air in the 1920s. The access road, now called Bell Sands, leads to the bridge and then the beach. In 1897, the council purchased Bell Wharf for public use for the sum of £185. Arthur Jocelyn notes in his autobiography, Jocelyn's Beach, about the little private beach at Chalkwell his family ran between 1909 and 1948, that it had grown in size, as had the amount of sand in the 1920s. He attributed this to the sand barges that were removing sand from Hadley Ray in 90-tonne loads for local brickmaking as the town grew in size. It is possible that the same effect was seen on Lee Beach, and perhaps the original sand even came from Hadley Ray in the estuary. Here is a selection of photos of the beach taken over the last 100 years or so. In the distance on the right of this photo, you can just make out the Gypsy, the first ship used as the headquarters of the Essex Yacht Club. The Gypsy was in use by the club between 1894 and 1930. This can help us when dating photographs. To reach the Gypsy, or to continue east towards Chalkwell, Westcliff and South End, one took the Cinder Path, described by Arthur Jocelyn as being in 1909 a narrow covered track between the railway and the seashore that led to Chalkwell Fields and what is now the Chalkwell end of the Westcliff Promenade. The path was covered with a sharp layer of cinders and ash, no doubt supplied by the railway company. Fortunately, we were saved the longer journey through the old town as now a fine new iron bridge had been constructed over the railway, about halfway between Old Lee and Chalkwell. This photo would appear to have been taken from that bridge 
which led from the seashore to Cliff Gardens. Arthur calls this bridge Queen's Bridge, although it later became widely known as Gypsy Bridge due to its proximity to the ship used by the Essex Yacht Club. Its modern replacement is still called Gypsy Bridge by some locals today. This photo looking west shows how busy the beach by the Gypsy and the bridge used to be. Just east of the Gypsy and very close to the bridge was a bathing station, the foundations of which can still be seen to this day. We finish with a view that would have been very familiar to Arthur, taken on Jocelyn's Beach looking west back along the cinder path towards the bridge, the yacht club and the bathing station. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and share this video if you enjoyed it.